Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We draw near to Nativity each week. The Church has given us this Sunday of the Holy Forefathers. You see in the icon before us. And next week, of course, we have the Holy Fathers. There's not a particular amount of difference. There's places they were written were somewhat different. This one focuses very much on those who prophesied, those who came before. Not so much the uh, physical lineage of the Mother of God, but of those who followed the will of God. Even though there are some of the others listed last night as well in the canon. On this day we have, of course, this famous gospel of the wedding banquet. And those who are called, or those who are actually chosen, are those who follow God's will and come to the banquet. They don't make excuses. They don't have their eyes totally on the things of this world, but the things that are above, and what their God has called them to do. They don't make excuses based on their lands, or their job, or their wife, or their relationships. They come to the banquet, and they come to Christ. And this parable is given to us not because our God is unjust, but He is indeed just. Because he calls all. He doesn't just take the kingdom away from the people of Israel and give it to the Gentiles. He gives it to all who follow his holy will. He looks for those who are true Israelites, much like Nathaniel, who is called an Israelite and who there is no guile, no, no deceit, one who is really a follower of the gospel, a follower of God. And he want, looks for those who are not just people that are of the circumcision, but are people of the circumcision of the heart, as St. Paul tells us, of course, as Jeremiah prophesies that we should be. Not just circumcised in our flesh, but circumcised in our hearts. Turn toward God, doing the offering from our heart to God. So indeed, God is just, because he gives everyone that opportunity, not just the people of Israel, but to the people anywhere who will fall upon and call upon his holy name. We hear that one beautiful passage in the Gospels when the Lord is told your mother and brothers and sisters are outside looking for you. And he says, whosoever does the will of my Father which is in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. That's not to negate his relatives by any means does he negate his mother, who is more pure than all. But he says all of us can be indeed of his family and of his forefathers and relatives and brothers and sisters if we but follow his holy will and do the will of his Father which is in heaven. Many are called, but few are chosen. God sends out his message to each and every one of us. But those of us who are chosen, of course, are those who follow his commandments. As the Apostle of Love, St. John, tells us over and over, he who loves me keeps my commandments. He who does not love me does not keep my commandments. And to be able to follow him, we have to know his commandments. So it helps, of course, to read them, to read the Gospels very frequently, to live the life of the Church, to immerse ourselves in the services, and to hear those things that Christ is calling us to do. Of course, St. Paul tells us there's a law even to itself, a natural law, to those people that are outside of the faith, and no right and wrong in their hearts. But it certainly helps to have that measure of the Gospel. There is great advantage to being of the people of Israel, because we have the prophets, we have the teachings, but now all of us have that. Those people who are called a few chosen, does it matter what our pedigree is, what our background is, who our family is? It can certainly help, but it's not essential. We look in the lives of the church, we look in the fathers last night. We have Seth. His sons are called the sons of God, but they fall away because their lust for the daughters of men. Being relatives of Seth didn't get them into the kingdom of heaven. We have Absalom, whose father was the great and holy prophet and King David. It didn't seem to help him too much, because he lusted for power so much that he wanted to kill his own father constantly and seek power. So having David as his father did not help him enter the kingdom of heaven. And of course, we have example after example after example. Look in the wilderness itself. And the people of Israel who have everything, a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day, and miracle after miracle, but yet they keep turning away. See the only ones that enter into the promised land. 
or Joshua and Caleb, because they were faithful. They did not try to deceive the people of Israel. Caleb, as I said, had his heart attached to the things of God, it says in the first chapter of Deuteronomy. What a person for us to emulate, someone who was attached to the things of God, to the ways of God, that we might too enter into the promised land. And the ultimate example we have, of course, is Judas, who follows for three years the very Savior himself, sees the miracles, is a part of the miracles, goes out and works miracles with the disciples as he is sent. Yet a few coins and a little bit of earthly power are worth far more to him. So being a direct disciple called by Christ did not get him into the kingdom of heaven. He had to follow the will of God, and that proved too difficult for him. Not too difficult, but he chose not to follow it. Indeed, that yoke was easier, but he did not follow it. The Lord tells us that he who hears my words and does them, I liken to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. You have to do those commandments, not just speak about them, not just follow them. It's not enough to read the books of the scriptures and say we're okay. We must read the scriptures with our very lives, to do everything we can to emulate everything in them. It's not good enough to say, I read the Philokalia. It's only good to say, I followed the Philokalia. We must read the lives of the fathers to be changed, to not just stay in the rut that we are in, but to follow the ways of the gospel. We have example after example in the history of the church of people like Barbara Lassie, whose own father had her killed, St. Chrissy, who has her parents try to get her to reject Christ, but we have also copious amounts of people like Basil and Amelia who gathered, gathered their whole family to become saints. Gregory and Macrina and Basil, Nocratios, Peter, on and on and on, in that same family. It can't help. But what matters is God gives us free wills. So we must choose to follow God and to keep our eyes on the things of heaven. The people in the wilderness had manna to eat and were given everything they could want, but they thirsted for more meat. And the Lord gave them quail up to their very heads to where it made them ill. They didn't want any more. And they suffered affliction because of their complaining and bitterness against God. Because they kept their thing, eyes on the things of this world and not on the things of the kingdom of heaven. As the Gentachion of the eighth ode of the uh, Akathi said, seeing a strange childbirth, it is to strange ourselves in the world by transporting our minds to heaven. To this then the Most High God appeared on earth as a lowly man, that he might draw to the heights those who cry to him, Alleluia. So let us take our things, our eyes, simply off of what is in the present, even though we won't even find God in the present, but to keep our eyes in the kingdom of heaven, to keep the eyes of our bodies to the ground in humility, and the eyes of our hearts to paradise, constantly to the throne of God, and to seek to follow his holy will, to not make excuses for ourselves. It doesn't matter that we were born Orthodox, or that we converted to Orthodoxy. It doesn't matter whether we're Russian or Greek. It doesn't matter, as we heard today, whether we are Jew or Greek or barbarian or Scythian or free or slave. The Christ who is all in all. The Christ fills up our hearts. We do not use our backgrounds as an excuse or as a something to fall back on that we think is great but to follow the gospel, to live the life of Christ, to be filled with Christ, to be those who walk with Christ, disciples of Christ, and not just people who kind of get along, to be Caleb, to be Joshua, to enter into the promised land because of our integrity, because of our boldness, because of our willingness to follow God, to be chosen to accept that call, Holy Forefathers, pray to God for us. Amen.